Hello everyone! Hope you're ready for another adventure, because today, Wayne reads The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. I wonder who's going to join us for today's adventure. Well, hello, Ruby. It looks like Ruby's back to join us for today's adventure. For those of you who may be new, if you hit the CC button in your YouTube link, you'll be able to follow along with us. Are you ready to jump in? Are you ready, Ruby? She's ready. Let's begin. H. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board, four down, four across, a perfect square. What are you up to, Bob demands. I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. That sign's a monstrosity, particularly since I'm not featured. I grab a bucket of red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I pointed out. Technically, I don't even live here, Bob says with a sniff. I'm homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard, then I make two fat lines, like broom handles. Another fat line connects them. I stand back. What do you think? What is it? No, wait. Let me guess. A ladder. Not a ladder, I say. A letter. At least, I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up next to Not Tag. Why? He asks, yawning. Because then I'll have a word. A very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. What word? Bob asks. Home. Bob closed his eyes. That's not so important, he says quietly. Nervous. All day long, I knuckle walk circles around my cage. I'm so nervous, I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not much anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. Surely, she'll look, truly look, at my painting. She won't notice the smudges and tears. She won't care if the pieces don't fit together. She'll see past all of that. She'll, surely, Julia will see what I have imagined. I watch Ruby trudge sullenly through the four o'clock show, and I wonder, what will happen if I fail? What if I can't make Julia understand? But, of course, I know the answer. Nothing. Nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at the Exit Big 8 Top Mall in Video Arcade, conveniently located off I-95, with shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year, year after year after year. Showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent, except for Thelma the Macaw, who is practicing her new phrase, uh-oh. I grabbed Knot Tag and carefully pulled out the folded papers. So many paintings. Page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on my glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture, and then another, another, and another. Each one a tiny part of a whole. Julia looks confused. But what is it, she asks. She shrugs, it doesn't matter. It's just as pretty as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think, no. It does matter. More paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says. And hurry, it's late. Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. 
I find one, another one, and another. I try to hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them over to me. One by one, I shove pictures through the window crack. They crumple and tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings in a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out the hole, and more and more, all of a sudden, all of them, one after another. So Ivan's been painting, has he? George says as he pulls up on his coat. A lot, says Julia with a laugh. A whole lot. You're not taking all those home, are you? George asks. I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're all just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not all be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mac will want to try and sell them. Although, why anyone would pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do? I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All my work. All my planning wasted. I look at Ruby, sleeping sound, and suddenly I know she'll never leave the big top mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. Chest beating. Often, when visitors come to see me, they beat their hands against their puny chests, pretending to be me. They pound away soundlessly as the wet wings of a new butterfly. The chest beating of a mad gorilla is not something you ever want to hear. Not even if you're wearing earplugs. Not even if you're three miles away wearing earplugs. A real chest beat sends the whole jungle running as if the sky has broken open, as if men with guns are near, angry, the sound, my sound, echoes through the mall. George and Julia spin around. Julia drops her backpack. George drops his keys. The pile of pictures go flying. Thump, thump, thump. I bounce off the walls. I screech and bellow. I beat and beat my chest. Bob hides under knock tag, his paws over his ears. I'm angry at last. I have someone to protect. After a long while, I grow quiet. I sit. It's hard work being angry. Julia looks at me with wide, disbelieving eyes. What the heck was that? George demands. Something's really wrong, Julia says. I've never seen Ivan act this way. He seems to be calming down now. Thank goodness, George says. George, Julia shakes her head. He's still upset, Dad. Look at his eyes. My pictures are scattered all over the floor, like huge autumn leaves. What a mess, George says, sighing. Wish I hadn't bothered sleeping tonight. Do you think Ivan's okay? Julia asks. Probably just a temper tantrum, George says. He reaches under a chair to retrieve a brown and red picture. Can't say I blame the guy, stuck in that tiny cage all these years. Julia starts to answer. But then she freezes. She cocks her head. She stares at her feet, where my pictures lie in disarray. Dad, she whispers, come see this. I'm sure she he's another Rembrandt, George says. Let's pick these up and get going, Jules. I'm exhausted. Dad, she says, seriously, look at this. George follows her gaze. I see blobs. Many, many blobs with the occasional swirl. Please, can we go home now? That's an H, Dad. Julian kneels down, straightening one picture and then another. That's an H, and here she has more pictures. This puts one here, and I don't know, maybe that one. You have an E. 
George rubs his eyes. I hold my breath. Julia is running now. She picks up one picture, sets down another. It's like a puzzle, Dad. This is something. It's a word. Maybe words. And a picture of something. A giant picture. Jules, George says. This is crazy. But he's looking at the floor too, wondering from picture to picture, scratching his head. H, Julia says. E, O, Ho? Julia chews her lower lip. H, E, O. And that looks a whole lot like an I. H E O I, George writes in the air with his finger. I E O H. Not a letter, an actual I. And that's a foot. Or maybe a tree. And a trunk. Dad, I think that's a trunk. Julia runs to the window. Ivan, she whispers. What did you make? I stare back and cross my arms. This is taking much longer than I thought it would. Humans. Sometimes they make chimps seem smart. Finally, Julia and George take the pictures to the ring, where there's room to see them all. An hour passes as they assemble my picture. Ruby's awake now, and she sees Bob and I watch. Ivan, Ruby says, is that a picture for me? Yes, I say proudly. Where am I supposed to be? That's a zoo, Ruby. See the walls and the grass and the people looking at you? Ruby squints. Who are all those other elephants? You haven't met them, I say, yet. It's a very nice zoo, Ruby says in a proving nod. Bob nudges me with his cold nose. Indeed. In the ring, Julia pumps her fist in the air. She cries, I told you, Dad. There it is. H-O-M-E. Home. George gazes at the letters. He spins and looks at me. Maybe it's just a coincidence, Jules. You know, once in a million kind of thing. Like the old saying goes about the chimp with the typewriter. Give him long enough and he'll write a number, a novel. I make a grumbling noise, as if a chimp could write a letter. Let me, let alone a book. Then how do you explain the rest of it, Julia says. The picture of Ruby in a zoo. How do you know it's a zoo, George asks. See the circle in the gate? There's a red giraffe in it. George squints and tilts his head. Are you sure that's a giraffe? I was thinking more along the lines of a deformed cat. It's the logo for the zoo, Dad. It's on all of their signs. Explain that. George gives her a helpless smile. I can't begin to. I'm just saying there has to be a logical explanation. Look how big this is, Julia puts the last piece of Ruby's ear into place. It's huge. It's definitely large, George agrees. Julia watches me. She chews on her thumbnail. I see the questions in her eyes. She turns back to the painting and stares at them. Looking. Truly looking. A slow smile draws on Julia's face. Dad, I have an idea. A big idea. Julia races around the edge of my painting. Her eyes spread wide. Bill Billard Big. I'm not following you. I think this is meant to be a billboard. That's what Ivan wants. George crosses his arms over his chest. What Ivan wants? He repeats slowly. And you know this because you two have been chatting? Because I'm an artist. And he's an artist. Uh-oh. Uh-huh, says George. Julia clasps her hands together. Come on, Dad, I'm begging you. George shakes his head. I'm not doing that. No billboard. I'll get the ladder, Julia says. You get the glue. I know it's dark out, but it's billboards lit. Mac will fire me, Jules. Julia considers everything. But think about the publicity, Dad. Everybody would know about Ruby. You want me to put a sign that shows Ruby in a zoo with the word home in giant letters. George gestures towards my picture. A sign, incidentally, that just happens to be made by a gorilla. Exactly. And you want me to do it without Max's permission, George asks. Exactly. No. George says, no way. Julia goes to the edge of the ring, careful not to step on any of the paintings. 
She picks up Mac's claw stick. She walks back and hands it to her father. George runs a finger along the blade. She's just a baby, Dad. Don't you want to help her? But how would it help, Jules? Even if lots of people see Ivan's sign, it doesn't mean anything's going to change. I'm not exactly sure yet, Julia shakes her head. Maybe we'll, people will see the sign and they'll know this isn't where Ruby belongs. Maybe they'll want to help too. George sighs. He looks at Ruby. She waves her trunk. Good job, Ruby. It's a matter of principle, Dad. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. L-E. George corrects. Dad, Julia says softly, what if Ruby ends up like Stella? Hmm. Good question. George looks at me and at Ruby and at Julia. He drops the claw stick. The latter, he says quietly, is in the back of the storage locker. I think that is a great place to end this latest part of the one and only Ivan. I'm so happy that his picture was able to be noticed by a fellow artist. Hopefully, this will work out good for you too, Ruby. But we will see you on the next adventure, okay? Bye-bye. And we'll see you on the next adventure here with Wayne Reeves. We hope you had a great time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.